Hello my very good friends, my name is Andy, you're watching World Culture Wrestling and I am here to tell you that on Saturday night, a mixed martial arts organisation unwittingly ran the best professional wrestling angle of 2018. I am, of course, talking about UFC 229, when Conor McGregor was soundly trounced in the night's main event, then unwittingly dragged into an ugly, ugly brawl that commentator Joe Rogan has since called the craziest thing he has ever seen in a crazy sport. The brawl is already infamous and it stole the weekend's Twitter buzz away from the biggest wrestling company on the planet, with even cheeky boy Steve Austin tweeting in the immediate aftermath, I love professional wrestling and unsurprisingly he wasn't talking about Super Showdown. Now the Australian show certainly wasn't bad, I mean I personally had a lot of fun with it, it had a couple of great matches, a few fun nostalgic moments, but did any of it really matter? What kind of impact did it really make? Contrast with the UFC show, it was the most heavily promoted fight of the year, that part of it lived up to its billing and yeah the closing incident was unsavoury, but it was one of the most memorable sporting images we've seen in years. Now heading into it, McGregor's promotion tactics were pointed because of course they were. That's what he does, he creates controversy and as we all know controversy creates cash to borrow a cliche. It wasn't that long ago that McGregor dragged his entire fight team out to the USA just to throw a steel dolly through the window of a bus containing Khabib Nurmagomedov and in true carny MMA nature he wasn't seriously punished, he wasn't blacklisted, he wasn't banned from ever competing again, he was rewarded with this a big money fight. To promote UFC 229, he offered Khabib, a Muslim, a shot of his whiskey, and he referred to his manager as a mad terrorist snitch. It's no wonder things escalated on fight night. Now before I dive into this, this obviously wasn't planned, it wasn't a work, it was very real, people were arrested, there'll be fines, there'll be bans, etc, 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 and it was a very serious incident, it wasn't a deliberate wrestling angle. But it was electric, it caught the imagination, it had the sport world buzzing and that's not something you can often say about WWE in 2018. To recap the fight itself, McGregor was soundly shellacked. I mean yeah he probably won the third round, but the second was easily a 10-8, he definitely lost the third, and in the fourth, yeah, well, he got his ass kicked. Now afterwards, Dylan Danis, who's one of Connor's boys, supposedly provoked Khabib, prompting him to jump over the cage wall like a madman, sparking the brawl. It was absolute chaos, and in the worst moment of all, two of Khabib's teammates hopped into the cage and literally sucker punched McGregor from behind, because that's the kind of people we're unfortunately dealing with. But what this was, at its core, was edgy gangland cinema played out in a major sporting arena, and WWE haven't done anything this edgy, dangerous, or vital in a long long time. Irrespective of your moral standing on the issue, this was a case of complex characters and heightened emotions in a major sports setting. It had major personal issues, geopolitical tension, cheap heat and the most technically proficient star against the most charismatic. It wasn't a work, but it was pro wrestling and WWE can replicate this. So why don't they? Now obviously WWE cannot allow their own stars to spit the kind of rhetoric that McGregor did in the build up, they are a family friendly organisation after all, but there are lessons to be learned. Ugly actions aside, it's hard not to feel a sliver of sympathy for Khabib, even though what happened was, in the end, objectively pretty gross. This was a man provoked beyond his limits by the ultimate provocateur. Now we've all been in similar situations at some point in our life, and we've all acted irrationally in the heat of the moment. Now this doesn't excuse Magomedov's actions, but Connor took shots at his homeland, his religion, his father. He'd have to be inhuman not to react to that, or perhaps more tellingly, you'd have to be a WWE superstar. Consider the recent WWE feud between Bobby Lashley and Sami Zayn. This thing was a big bag of balls, and that was largely down to the way Big Bad Bobo was portrayed throughout. Zayn poked fun at his warm family upbringing, he even brought in three dorks to mock his sisters. Bobby probably should have been angry about this, right? He should have smashed his goddamn skull in, but he didn't. Lashley replied with a big smile, he actually said the whole thing was hilarious, he thanked Zayn for being such a good friend and he pretty much patted him on the back. In effect, what he was saying was the old kiddies cliche, sticks and stones may break my bones but names will never hurt me, and this is coming from a guy we're supposed to take seriously as some kind of pseudo combat sports athlete, and a guy with MMA credibility of his own, yet here he is, looking like a nerd. The lameness of the whole situation meant the fans could only respond with what chance and Lashley, the poor guy, 
looked softer than charming. Now the feud did admittedly end with Lashley's overdue comeuppance, but by that point nobody even cared anymore. Bobby was made to look like just another dork in WWE's schoolyard. Take it back to the UFC and Dylan Dan is supposedly hurling insults at Nur Magomedov after the fight. If this played out in a WWE ring, there's no way Khabib's going over that cage. He's standing there, smiling away, looking like a dickhead. But unfortunately and depressingly, Lashley is far from the only guy you could ask the question, who the f*** is this guy in WWE? AJ Styles worked with Shinsuke Nakamura for an absolute ice age, yet he never learned to wear a cup, despite having his own balls splattered on at least half a dozen different occasions. When Baron Corbin tried to bully Finn Balor off Raw, even going so far as to buy the Irishman a kid's playhouse, why did he just stand there smiling vacantly? Why didn't he stand up for his goddamn self? And when Aiden English accused Lana of destroying her marriage with Rusev, why, oh why? Why was the Bulgarian brute just standing there staring as if he didn't know what to do? To borrow a phrase from another legitimate sport, UFC 229 versus WWE Super Showdown was a case of men against boys, which is quite ironic when you think about the combined age of DX and the Brothers of Destruction. At UFC 229, no matter where you stand, when all was said and done, a real life situation manifested a situation that was both stranger and better than fiction. Meanwhile, in WWE, the so-called superstars stare gormously and helplessly at a preordained script that is designed to make them look like complete and utter wet dorks. Short of ripping their formula up, WWE could really do with taking a page out of Conor McGregor's playbook and picking up a steel dolly and throwing it all the way through the whole damn thing. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on what WWE can learn from the ugly but compelling incident that took place at the end of UFC 229, but what do you guys think? I want to hear from you down in the comments section below, so go ahead and sound off. And once you've done that, why not take yourselves over to whatculture.com forward slash WWE, where you'll find all manner of great articles, including the one this very piece is based on, written by the great man, my dad, Michael Sidgwick. You'll have a great time, I've been Andy, and I'll see you later.